one. Welcome back to the Black Millennium Podcast, Season 2, Episode 3. We got Millie in the spot. How you doing, my boy? Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Good week, you know. We're yeah. just hustling, man. Tell me something good. What happened good this week? Um, This week, my grandma's birthday was this week, so kind of celebrated that. Happy birthday to her. Yeah, happy That's birthday great. to her. Okay. Facts. Facts. Yeah, uh, man, this week, it was a good week, bro. I've been trying to get the vaccine. I haven't been able to get it. So anybody out there listening knows he has a link. Shoot that to me because I need it. Uh, but I got a new Cane Corso. Nice little puppy. You feel me? Her name is Electra. Yeah. If you want to know more about her, go to Apple Podcasts. Look up Jules and Jim's podcast. And you can find more about her. I'm going to keep you all updated over there. And yeah, but I'm I'm loving the puppy, bro. You should get you should get a puppy or a dog yourself one day. I, I would love a dog. I like dogs, but unfortunately, I'm allergic. I do have a cat though. She's she's pretty great. Her name's Skittles. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> uh, aside from dogs and cats, uh, what are we talking about today? Man, we're talking about all things relationships, relationships, relationships. Why relationships. they're important. How to maintain them. Now. With relationships, what I want to say is there has to be some type of value brought with romantic relationships. That's what I'm talking about right. specifically. And when I say romantic relationships, that does not mean like we're that's my girlfriend. No, we could just we could be good good friends in a, like a relationship, but we don't have a title. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Why are relationships important to you, man? Um, relationships to me, um, they can kind of teach you how to, how to love and be loved with your whole heart. Because that's something that if you're going for, if you if it's your first time getting into a relationship, that's one thing you should really take out of it is how to love someone and how to feel loved. You know what I mean? Because that for a lot of people's first time, that's why some forced relationships don't work out because they don't know how to feel love and you know they don't know how to love somebody and how to um show their love to somebody so yeah if you want to walk away with anything that's the one thing you want to walk away with from a relationship is how to feel love and how to love somebody you know what i wanted to add on top of that you know what i'm saying i remember my first relationship if she's listening right now (laughs) i hope you're doing good but like you have to learn how to love from a balance you know what i'm saying yeah like I can still love my girl with my heart. You know, we I still love you, but I got to love you from a balance because I can't just be investing and spending all my time and all I got into you. And it's taking me off of my paper trail, off of my career trail, off of my whatever I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so yeah, I you- think what we have to do is we have to learn how to love from a balance. And at a young age, it's kind of hard because once you, yeah. once you got one that you like, like, like you feel like you're on top of the world and we ain't get even get college yet <laughs> you get cocky yeah but you gotta like you were saying it has to be a balance you have to learn how to love somebody but then also learn how to still keep your boundaries and love yourself so you're not pouring everything all of your seconds into this one person because like you said there needs to be a balance or else you're gonna completely wear yourself out you know what i mean and that's another thing i wanted to bring up was it's kind of a mutual thing in a relationship it's always going to be mutual you always have to have an understanding with the other person you have to understand their boundaries they have to understand your boundaries and such and you know it's it's not too hard i, I don't understand when people say relate um um keep a relationship is hard for the first time it's going to be a little tricky because you got to navigate it but after like your first few relationships it really is not that hard so i never get when people say it's hard you kind of just got to find that balance you know yeah you got to find that balance sometimes i understand why people say it's hard and you know why i understand it's because people continuously choose the wrong person (laughs) (laughs) you feel me like you're continuously going left when you need to be going right right (laughs) and sometimes i'm gonna be honest it's hard you might see something that you like left like damn that's what's to the left of me is yeah you feel me 
it's to the right. My look might not look so tight. Might it might like might not look so nice. But well, yeah. you know, but, sometimes you gotta you gotta go with the right decision, you know? Yeah, but the other good thing about being in a relationship that you should take away from is you kinda it kinda acts as a mirror. Relationships kinda act as a mirror for you to learn more about yourself and what you should change and what you like. And like going back to your saying, people keep going back to the wrong thing. When they get in relationships, they're not listening to what, they're not paying attention to what they like. They're just kind of, there is no balance with them. They're kind of just focused on this one person. You know what I mean? And it's like, they delude themselves into thinking that's what they like when really they're not really paying attention to things that they like, who they might like and such. So it's, uh, like you said, it now I, I can understand why it's hard, but you know, there's still, for me, I don't know. I can understand why it's hard, but it's never been too hard for me, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, so this, I kind of wanted to add you a, I'd ask a question. So this mirror that you're talking about, is, are you using that to literally think, think of things like, oh, this is what I like? Like, give me a little bit more explanation well, of this mirror that you're using and how well, you- I'm, I mean, yeah, when you're, especially when you're young, your relationships aren't, always going to be that serious when you're when you're when you're young it's kind of more experimentation i guess and um like i said mirror you know relationships the relationships help you reflect especially when you unfortunately when something bad goes on in the relationship it can help you reflect on things that you may need to change about yourself or that you may think i don't like this type of person or i don't like you know people like that and you know, it helps you learn about yourself. And that's, that's, it's, it's a good thing. You know, that's why sometimes I'm not going to say breakups, though tough. A lot of the times they do help people learn about themselves and how to react to whatever their partner says or something their partner does and such like that, so that it doesn't end the way their first relationship ended. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a um, growth aspect to it. I'm saying, you know, it's, it's something that you need to relationships help you build upon and something that you need to grow on yeah yeah i feel you there you know that kind of relates to uh what i kind of call red flags it's kind of <laughs> how i see it we, we got i see a lot of red flags i might be dealing with a with a girl and you know certain actions like you said sometimes a breakup that's what it what it takes a breakup to really you know say sit back and think like oh shit i did this wrong or i should i i reacted this to this wrong um those to me are like red flags you know what i'm saying like maybe if she did react to that wrong that's a red flag if i did react to it wrong it's a red flag on my part maybe that might be the reason she don't want to do with me no more you win some you lose some you know what i'm saying but i also wanted to to you know stick to one thing about one thing that is important in relationships and that's being vulnerable um, I think to some some extent we gotta be vulnerable. It's okay to be vulnerable. I'm a I'm a man. We both men, um, young men, and it's okay to be vulnerable. Like not everybody's like the tough guy all the time. Like sometimes we need a hug too. You feel me? Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. We need a hug too, though. You feel me? Yeah, but we get shorter to cry on too sometimes. <laughs> no, yeah, just definitely, especially unfortunately. For men, and I feel like we do this to ourselves. We're kind of taught to compartmentalize our feelings. I just said that completely wrong, but um, we're kind of taught at a very young age to kind of hide our feelings and kind of treat everything like it's a game. And that's not it's it's not a game, and it's it's tough to go through life that way, thinking that a lot of relationships you're going through is like a test, not not a test, a, a game, and something that you should you shouldn't take seriously because a lot of guys don't think they should take a relationship seriously. They think they can just be cute, um, give their, give their girl a gift every once in a while and boom, you know, they're happy, but no, there has to be, like you said, look at going back to what you said, there has to be some type of balance and you have to know how to love someone. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know how to love someone. And you know, that leads into like maintaining relationships like we all mess up we're humans right 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 but i'm not buying a birkin to get you back <laughs> it's not happening <laughs> you know what i'm saying not buying a there's ways i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna maintain this relationship 
uh, without having to buy you a Bergen or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Right. So what, what is it that, that you think is needed to maintain a relationship? Um, we said this probably like over and over again already. A mutual response, mutual respect, obviously. But um, yeah, mutual respect. And then also you kind of have to be, uh, you have to be genuine with them. You know what I mean? You have to be really in touch with your feelings and you have to be open about come like you know coming forward with your feelings and you know talking to the person especially if you're in a, like romantic relationship you got to really be vulnerable with that person because if not they're gonna if they feel like you're shutting something off from them they're gonna maybe they're gonna jump to conclusions maybe they're gonna confront you about it and if you don't say something yada yada stuff happens you know what i mean yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's kind of, that's why I think, you know, honesty is the best policy. Um, being honest about your intentions, how you feel, uh, all that. And like I said, in a romantic relationship, you got to be honest about how you feel. Got to be honest about your your intentions. And when, again, when I say romantic, that does not mean that I have to be uh, in a relationship. She does not have to. That don't mean she's my girlfriend or that does not mean I am her boyfriend. But I still could be honest about my intentions. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of, that's game. That's game that us, you know, men, we're just, we're, right. we're off of that because we, we often treat relationships like as if they're a game, you know? And yeah. they're not. We, we got the PS5 for that, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's okay to be honest, you know? Right. It's a lot of fish in the sea. It's a you, lot of fish in the sea. You, you, I, keep, you keep bringing up that um, you keep talking about how when you say relationships, you don't always mean a girlfriend, boyfriend type relationship. So my question is to you, do you think that if you're not in that type of relationship, like if you're not labeled as boyfriend, girlfriend, do you think you treat them differently? Like, so, like do you think you treat them differently? And do you think they might treat you differently because of that? Yeah, and that's okay. Cause we're not, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. So there, there are no obligations. I'm not obligated to text you every morning. I'm not right. obligated to text you good night. You know what I'm saying? It's no <laughs> obligations that, but at some point you gotta, I guess you gotta grow out of that, but it's, it's just, you no, know, like it's, it's, it's a friendship, but you I hang out that, with yeah. that person. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, yeah. But I mean, if you like that person, obviously go for it. Yeah, Wait, go for it. No time to waste. Just go for it at this point. Yeah. The worst thing they can do is reject you. The worst thing they that's can the do. worst thing they can do is reject you. Yeah, and take your time. That's that's where I'm I'm heading with this. Take yeah. your time. It's really no rush. No rush. We could be we could be friends for three years and then we could hop in a relationship. Yeah. Taking our time. It's all cool. Yeah. Everybody goes at this at their own pace. You know? That is a good way to take the to sort of um going back to maintain relationship, taking your time because a lot of people will rush into things and even like rushing into um things like intercourse, sex, that is something that, you know, it's, like I was saying before, you gotta set boundaries and you, you know, you gotta yeah, you gotta set boundaries and you gotta like you were saying, you gotta take things slow sometimes. You gotta take things that a pace where both you guys are comfortable with and you know back to that mutual understanding you gotta you know you gotta just kind of feel the waters first like are you saying you could be friends for three years first you kind of gotta feel the waters first see how you are how you act with them and stuff like that to sort of evaluate whether or not you should be getting a relationship with them you know what i mean yeah 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 that's a fact you have to uh like you say you do have to evaluate and See if that's somebody you do want to be in a relationship with. I feel like you shouldn't force a relationship on yourself for yeah. whatever reason people do, like for like security or like uh, like assurance. Like they might just force that relationship with a person because they get reassurance or because they get a certain you know thing like security, something like that. And don't force yourself in a relationship. Like I said. There are a lot of fish in the sea. You know what I'm saying? You lose one, there's a million more. Right. <laughs> now. Millions more. Millions of more. Now, that just because there are millions of more, that doesn't mean that you might, you, you can still lose a good one and then go back into the sea and choose an even worse one. 
<laughs> like it could be even worse. Yeah, the dating is kind of. I mean, there are red flags you could spot, but sometimes there aren't those red flags. And dating is kind of like if you're dating multiple people and you're in that sort of world, it's kind of. I'm not gonna. It's kind of random. It's kind of random when it comes to dating and stuff like that. Sometimes you don't know what you're gonna get, it's and that shaky, bro. that's yeah. the unfortunate part. I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about um, going back to how to maintain relationships because you you said something about um assurance and reassurance um key to really maintain relationship is reassurance making sure that you that person knows you love them and i i i struggle with this i struggle with um i had to grow out of that um saying like verbally saying to someone i i, I love you or you know i i'm glad i'm with you or something like that and just regularly showing your appreciation for that person and the person has to do the same for you because um, a lot of some people can really get insecure about it. And like I, I, I was in a situation once where this person was just not saying anything to me. They were they, we were in a relationship, I guess, but they didn't act like it. So I was just like I had to confront them on it too. But I was getting real insecure, and I was like, okay, well maybe they don't like me anymore. Blah blah blah. But then I, you know, I talked to them about it and learned that they, this is their first relationship. So I kind of gave them a little leeway on it. And, you know, they, they kind of had to learn how to, going back to, they had to learn how to love someone. They had to learn how to uh, reassure someone that, you know, they can be a relationship and that they actually like being in this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a big point. That's a big point. And, and I feel like when it's done the right way, it helps the t- the, the the two people in the relationship obviously yeah um but sometimes everybody is different you know sometimes people aren't the one to just be all up over you and talking about i love you i love you and i think like everybody's different but that just become that comes with you learning your partner you feel right. me and right. with you learning your partner uh you'll find that there is reassurance some way somehow there you'll get to it it's it maybe a journey or a path like you said with your situation and your experience but like i said when it's done the right way uh i feel like it helps the relationship as a whole you know right and reassurance isn't always saying i love you or giving a gift something like that you'd be tiny little subtle things you know what i mean yeah tiny it's it's always the little things it's the little things you got to worry about yep it's the little, little things you can focus on. It's the little things. Like you get a uh, a burger from in and out It's the little things about that burger that makes it good. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, because it's from the special person. Exactly. It's the little things. But thank you for rocking with us. The Black Millennial Podcast, episode three, season two. We out of here. You got anything to say, man? Uh, stay safe out there. And hopefully you guys are signing up for some vaccines because we need to get back to the somewhat normal life soon. I don't know. Facts. We need to get back to the normal life soon. Where can they catch you at? Instagram, Twitter. You want to shout anything out? Um, I do not want to shout anything out. I don't have Instagram, so I'm not really a social media type of guy. Okay. Okay. That might be our next topic in the next episode. <laughs> you soon. Uh, you could catch me on Instagram at one Caleb Conant. C A L E B C O N A N T. Yep. You can find me on Twitter at Caleb Connett too. Just spelled it for you. Just rerun the podcast and figure that out as well. Caleb Connett too. And click the link in the in the bio. You can find other things too. Well, I mean, we're out. Black Millennial Podcast. See you. Dope, dope. For sure, guys. Good job. Uh, hold on, let me stop recording. <laughs>